Hi there, I'm Simon, and today I'm going to be showing you a really quick, easy tutorial on how to install Home Assistant on a Raspberry Pi. So these are the items I need to get started. We've got the Raspberry Pi. This one's a Raspberry Pi 3B+. I've got the SD card. It's a 64 gig one. Um, I've got a SD card converter that allow me to plug it into the computer, the laptop. I've got a internet cable just to plug from the Raspberry Pi back into my router. I've got a charger, Raspberry Pi charger, and I've got a case. So the first thing we're gonna do is take our SD card and we're gonna put it into this little reader. Wrong way, there we go. Stick it in like that and we're gonna plug that into the computer. So now we're gonna go along here, we're gonna search for Balina Etcher. And I'll put a link to this in the description below. So we go along there, uh, we're gonna click on that, and we're going to say that we wanna download it for Windows. So we do a download, and you'll see it pops up there in my download box, pretty small, so shouldn't take long at all. So there we go, it's almost done. And now we're gonna double click on that. And that will open it up for us. There we go, let's say agree. That's now installing the Bellina Etcher software. And we will then be able to use this to flash the file onto our SD card. All right, so we're gonna use this, as I say, to flash a file from URL. Okay, so that's, so next we're gonna go along to the Home Assistant website. There we go. And we're gonna select Home Assistant and we're saying installation. That's the section we wanna go to. And we're going to be installing it on a Raspberry Pi. So we select that. Okay, so you see it's got all our information there. We've got the Bellina. Now what we're gonna do, I'm installing it this time on a Raspberry Pi 3, and so I'm gonna go for 32-bit. If you're doing it on a Raspberry 5 Pi 4, then you can go for the 64-bit, just to be safe. So I'm gonna say Raspberry Pi 3, 32-bit, and I'm then going to go here, and I'm gonna say copy. So I'm copying that URL link. I'm gonna to go to my Bellina, and I'm now going to paste this link in there. So that's now gonna pull the information off the Raspberry Pi website, off the Home Assistant website, and it's going to install it onto our drive. So we go OK. So and once it's downloaded that information, we'll then go and select our target. So we're going to install it on the USB device. It's a 64 gig one. And we're gonna go select. Next up, we just press the flash button there. And now it will take, so Windows is just saying, are you happy with that? And we'll say yes. And there we go. So it has started now pulling that information and flashing it onto that SD card. So, so there we can see now the flashing is complete. So I've taken the SD card out of the adapter, put it back into the Raspberry Pi, installed the Raspberry Pi in its case, plugged in the power supply, connected the network cable to one of the network ports on the back of my Wi-Fi router. And now what I do is I come back here and I find the address for Home Assistant. So I scroll down here and you'll see there, Home Assistant Local. So we just copy that link and we paste that into our network. And there we go, isn't that amazing? So it's now starting up on the Raspberry Pi. All right, there we go. So it's ready for us to start with the setup. So I'm gonna put my name in here Simon, and I'm going to give it a username. We'll call it Simon C. Give it a password, A, B, C, one, two, three. Just something simple, A, B, C, one, two, three. There we go. And we're gonna say create an account, and that will create the first user account. The name, I'll call it Simon home 
Okay, there we go. Now I'm going to ask it to detect where I live. So it's shown me there in Auckland. Great. Um, above sea, I'm about 30 meters above sea. I want to go on a metric system and a New Zealand dollars. And I go next. And there we go. We're almost there. Now, um, it's asking me if it's okay for me to share my statistics. Now, I think this is a great idea. So I'm going to say yes, 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 because I would like Home Assistant developers to be able to know what I'm doing and to use the data to improve the service. So we're going to go next. Um, so now what it's going to do, it's going to have a look if there's any devices already on your network. So you might find that it comes up with nothing, like this one, or you may find that it comes up with things. Um, for example, it might find things like your um, Google um, Cost devices, Chromecast, or something like that on your network. So I'm going to go finish, and there we go. I've now got an absolutely fresh new setup of Home Assistant all ready to go. You can so let's go for a brief run through of what's showing up here on our dashboard here. So on the left hand side, we're in the overview page at the moment. Overview page um, shows the name of your Home Assistant and it's also got a little search tool here so we can search for any of the entities within Home Assistant. As you can see, it's already created a weather entity and a Simon Cater person entity. This one over here, that allows us to edit our dashboard. So if we go in there, we want to say take control. All right. And now we can start editing the dashboard and adding in more cards. This is the energy page. If we go and we add an energy sensor, such as the Shelly EM, which I'll be doing another video on, you'll be able to start recording your energy monitoring. I've also done a video talking about how to use a Home Assistant Glow system to build your own energy monitor. Check for the link below. Um, the map will show us where we are, so it's already detecting that I'm based in Auckland. The logbook, this has started to already started to log things that are happening in here. So it shows me what's going on in my Home Assistant. History, once again, once we start using the system, it will start building up a history. Media files. So I've got no media loaded on my Home Assistant at the moment. If we have a look there, absolutely nothing. But we do have this Razio browser that comes as a standard. So we can immediately go along and we can select a radio category. So let's say popular. This is a relatively new thing that's come in with Home Assistant. And I can say, let's go to Dance Wave. And that will now open up an internet radio station for us. So that's pretty cool. You could then play that on, on your speakers in the house or something like that. So you'll see currently it's just going to play it in my web browser. But if I had internet speakers connected, I could play that over the internet. If we scroll down further, we've got developer tools. So we'll show you how these work in later videos. And we've got the settings. This is one of the most important pages. So if we have a look here, we've got the Home Assistant Cloud. Now, I would really recommend that if you're wanting to integrate either your Amazon Alexa or Google Home um, tools, the little uh, speakers for voice assistant, I would really recommend going and signing up for the Nabucasa Cloud. Um, it's really worth it. Um, it cost me about seven New Zealand dollars per month. I'm happy to pay that because it is funding Paulus and his team to develop more great systems in the Home Assistant tool. So it offers you the Alexa integration, the Google integration, but it also gives you a um, integration that you can basically access it on the phone when you're away from home. So if you're outside of your local network using Nebuchadnezzar without having to do all sorts of complex things and compromising your security, you can basically do it with us. So I pay it, it's well worth it. If we go into devices and services, this is where we're going to start adding our devices. So in the next episode, we're gonna add a Shelly One, which is a local control switch. Uh, if we scroll back to that main page, We've also got things like automations. Once we've added our switch, we're going to run a basic automation to switch the lights on at sunset. Next up, we scroll down here. We've got areas and zones. 
these are different zones. So when you add your different um, devices, you can put them in zones to make it easier or areas to find them. Next, we've got add-ons. Now, we will be talking about add-ons and further episodes as well. So there's some really good add-ons. For example, there's a Google backup app, which is really good so that if you ever have a failure on your SD card, you can just do a backup. Super simple and restore. Um, we've also got tags, so NFC tags. I've ordered myself a tag reader, and we're going to have a look at some NFC tag readers soon. Dashboards, so you can create multiple different dashboards to access your system, and these are really, really easy to create. We'll talk about those later. Uh, we've got people, so I'm in there. We can add more users into the system at a later date. Uh, we can go to the system, so this is where you would restart the system. If you're asked to do a restart, you go to this page and you press the restart button and it will restart the whole thing. You can also do manual backups here. For example, I can go and I can create a backup. I would really recommend doing manual backups on a regular basis until you install an automated backup system. Uh, so now you've got your Home Assistant running on a Raspberry Pi connected to your network. In the next episode, I'm going to be showing you how to take a Shelly One, which is a really simple little device that can be used to connect up a light and turn it on and off from your home assistant. We'll also do a simple animation, turning the lights on at sunset and switching them off at 10 o'clock. I use this to control my garden lights. Anyway, that's all for now. Bye then.